I don't know if it started. I think it did. Craptastic. Well, let's hope it did. If it didn't, if it doesn't, it doesn't. It didn't. Okay. There are uh, there are several videos about cam timing on the F53 motors. 53? F53? F56. Right? No, 53. 50-53. Um, anyway, it's a single overhead cam motor, so what's the deal with the, you know, the, the two colored links and you line them up over the triangular pointer and you line them up between the notches on the camshaft, or on the crankshaft and yada 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 blah 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 what a convoluted clusterfuck of a way to it can do cam timing on a single overhead cam engine how about we just do it like this <clears throat> well maybe not exactly like this you might want to have a little cleaner setup than i do but eh, i'm in the backyard so whatever all right check it so this is what i got here's a cam the rockers with the, the rollers of the rockers <laughs> the rock and rollers roll on the top of this so it pushes the valve down when the lobes come up so top dead center would be lobes down and ready to fire right there so look down here and you can split the difference visually on these lobes there's the uh, intake and there's the exhaust i believe no. yeah yeah so anyway that gives you that indicator if you didn't have a mark to go by but i'm pretty sure that that means that this pin goes straight up when it's at top dead center because that's where top dead center would be and the, uh, with the before I put the head on, I brought the piston to top dead center just by holding on to this nut right here and bringing the turning it back and forth and watching the top of the piston. And it would go up and then drop and then back, and then you just wiggle it back and forth until you, you know you're right there. And you're right there, even if you didn't have a mark to go by, you'd know you were at top dead center. And here you can go by the lobes, even if you had no marks to go by you'd know that you were top dead center right there. So instead of counting links and all this BS and having to take off the timing cover and take off the pulley with the pulley puller and all that shit to get to see those two little marks down there that's a pain in the ass and nobody who really works on things does it that way unless they got a, you know, a shop and all the shit and, you know, in their shop and they're ready to go. So, and that's great if they do that. But uh, here's what we got. Here's the, um, the tensioner side and here's just the... Uh, the guide and obviously that's how the cam goes on so this is how I do it is I haven't put in the the uh, tensioner plunger yet but I will just kind of put the gear down in here slip it into plate slip it into the chain <clears throat> if I can <laughs> there we go okay and now see it's not quite lining up well, then I just take and I walk a tooth around. Ooh, now, how close is that? Ah, so you're not quite there yet. Our, lo our lobes went off, so like that. Let's go a little farther. Bring another one around. I need one more. The divisions between one tooth are more than a couple of degrees. I don't know exactly how much they are, but basically when you uh, move one tooth, if you're one tooth off on your timing, that translates to a, you know, a, uh, a couple degrees. Or what am I trying to say here? I'm just gonna say you move it one tooth, it's only a very minute amount in the degree measurement. And so, um, blah, 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 brain fart. And so there you go. Yeah, you're not going to move it too far accidentally, going one tooth at a time. You know, and if you somehow did manage to have one tooth off of where it would supposed to be, if you were using marks, that's not going to damage anything in all likelihood. It would not in this motor. Um. Okay. So. That's what we got. So basically, you put the piston at top dead center visually, or use a you know stick down the spark plug hole, and then you put the guides in and hoop the chain up there, and you slip the cam and you put the cam in place. You slip the gear onto there, 
And here's something else I'm noticing right now. Okay, we're at TDC as far as that goes. And uh, this line right here. Ooh, maybe we're not quite at TDC. I think it's... Hmm, let's see. Find something straight to go. Oh my god. one off because it looked to me and nobody says it it's not in a video anywhere it's not in the book I looked in the book but when it's a top dead center that line right there okay the little the pin is up at the top and this line matches up with that but it's dipped below it right now so I'm gonna get on this end and get a little closer yeah it's, it's, it's one tooth I went one tooth too far so we're going to come back one. So I'm going to slip it off of there a little bit. And get that one tooth. And we take it back. Take it back, y'all. Take it back and take it back. There we go. Now the tensioner's on this side, so that's where the slack is taken up. So this side you want to pull tight when you're looking jacks up. Now. Mm -mm -mm. Pin. Point it upwards. Actually, now I'm thinking it's not quite. I think it was right the other way, so never mind about the line, I guess. <laughs> but, uh. Yeah. There we go. Okay, because I'm going by the lobes. Okay, by the lobes. That's TDC. They're about the same angles. Um, got any other marks going on? Oh. Is that a mark? No. It's a shadow. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, this is pointed at 12 noon straight up. So there you go. That's how you time it. Now I just bolt it together. And no counting links and none of that bullshit. You don't have to take the timing cover off. You don't have to take pulleys off. None of that crap. <laughs> this is my mount when I was uh, getting ready to do it. I didn't have something uh, Well, I wanted it free up here actually and I didn't want to remove this this thing or anything so I uh, I guess I wouldn't have to Anyway, I just I noticed if I ran a bolt through there and let it hang off to the side It would catch the, the bottom of the engine and hold it from underneath and that way there would be nothing in the way up here So not using it correctly, but it, it's using it for what it's intended for So there you go. I'm gonna put the bolt in and uh yeah, that's where they get you off. They tell you to uh, to put it in a different position because ooh, there's a little triangle mark too. It's pointing right where it's supposed to. Okay, um, they they have you put it in the position so that the the tool will lock into place right here, so you can tighten the bolt. However, when I get it in there, I just you know snug everything, and when I go to tighten this bolt, what I've been doing is taking a a screwdriver I have that's really tough steel. And going through this hole and letting it rest against the bolt in the uh, the bolt on the cap to hold it in place. And I mean, you know, it's such a small fulcrum there. You can put plenty of force on it. You can just hold it in place and just pull it tight. And it ain't going nowhere. So okay, that's the that's how you do your cam timing without having to take off your timing cover, your pulley. Mat, mark up these teeth mark up these teeth and do that whole rigmarole I have no freaking idea why they don't just put a mark on the pulley or a mark on the crank and the pulley in the same spot and correspond to a mark on the block and put a mark up here and then as those two marks are right it's right it's that simple all right now I'm going to take these things off and uh give it a 